Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going over a breakdown for Susamaru. We're gonna go over all of her buttons, all of her specials, and then all of her combos and strategy you'll want to take in place when you're actually playing her. So, overall, Susamaru is definitely a unique character for this game. Perhaps not as unique as someone like Yahaba, but she's definitely up there, probably the second most unique. Obviously starting off with the fact that her regular attacks are projectiles. That makes her weird already. But just a lot of things about her game plan is so different to any other character. For instance, the fact that her like regular attacks start a red combo. So when you start combos, you don't really want to start them from your normal attacks. You, if you want to start combos, you usually want to start with a special move or a dive kick or something. So she's very unorthodox for a character in this game. But I think that makes her very unique and very fun to figure out and learn a new playstyle in this game. Because basically everyone else plays the exact same. <laughs> Other than the new ones, of course. But um, yeah, rambling aside, let's actually get into all of her stuff. So we're gonna start off with some boring things, where I guess for her they're not boring because they're projectiles, but I'll leave a timestamp to combos in the end, and I'll also have a separate video if you just want to watch combos. But uh, yeah, starting off with her regular attack string, obviously, they're projectiles. And her regular attack string, she throws a total of 6 projectiles, and does not too great damage, 629, so nothing ridiculous, but um... Her projectiles, at least they do damage, unlike Yahaba, and they, unlike Yahaba as well, they do not travel full screen, whereas Yahabas do. So you do have to be aware of that, they travel about half the screen, so like if you're full screen away from the opponent, like if I get him to go even further, there is no chance that my projectiles are going to hit. Um, except for your extended combo string, so if I do my down combo, that will actually reach the opponent, I'm pretty sure. She throws them all the way, and the up combo is the exact same. But I don't recommend you throw out a full attack string when you're, you know, just <laughs> trying to zone the opponent with your buttons. Because if the opponent is, like, walking at all, or moving at all, how, wait, how do I get... Sabito to move. If they're moving at all, Susumaru does not retrack, like, at all. She is going to be attacking in the complete wrong direction, and if the opponent realizes you're just going to keep mashing the attack button, you're going to get punished. So I don't recommend throwing out the full attack string just in neutral and just like <laughs> using it to hone, like keep the opponent down because that's not really going to work. You have to mix it up and oh no 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 please don't come at me. <laughs> so yes they are good zoning tools that she can just throw out projectiles for free and do some damage from them. But you want to make sure you know you're only throwing out a few projectiles at a time and if you see the opponent is just going to stand there and block him. Sure do the full attack string make them block then run in behind them maybe go in for a grab or something. Then you can mix it up. So yeah, if they're standing still, sure. Do the full attack string, run behind it, maybe go in for a grab. Be some, you know, sneaky mix-ups. And they're a lot cheaper than characters like Rui and Akaza because her projectiles, or her attack projectiles, are totally free. And honestly, they do more damage than Rui's projectiles that actually cost, da cost meter. So like her down combo, if you just get a hit, may as well just do the down combo. You get, you know, 1,000 damage. That's more damage than Rui gets from his projectiles, so, you know, take it, it's pretty good. But just make sure you're not using them solely as zoning tools, or just make sure if you are, you're careful about it, and you only do the full attack string if the opponent is standing there, getting hit, or blocking. Um, the most damage you really get from doing a regular attack string will be doing the up combo into her charged kick, and <laughs> 1,700 damage is basically the max damage she'll get um, from doing her regular attacks. Uh, unless, you know, want to do it tons of meter for, like, demon skills or going in for an ultimate or something. But if you just want to do a simple, you know, get some damage, I re recommend you just do her up combo. See, that does a little bit more damage, but then you've used a demon skill for not that much damage. So, yeah. Up combo into her charged guard skill is the way to go. <laughs> so, yeah. Those are her regular attacks. Very unique off the bat. And just a quick note on <laughs> how to zone with them again. I think it's really good like to throw out a bunch, and if you see the opponent has dodged them and they are really good at punishing you, like if your opponent is punishing just you doing the three projectiles, maybe they're armoring through them, or they're Susamaru, they're something that has a you know an ar armored charge attack, or they dodged them and they're running at you now, you can always, because they're regular attacks, you can just dash cancel out of the way and get out of there. Or you can even dash behind them to get like a full combo going that way. Um, to dodge out of the way, or yeah, just make sure you like try to jump cancel them or dash cancel them to keep yourself safe Because you know the beginning of your dash is invincible So if you think your opponent is gonna try and punish you for doing it Just do a quick sidestep get out of the way. It will cost you meter, but it will save you dying. So that's good uh, 
And yes, you can cancel them even on whiff into any of her special moves. So you can cancel it into, you know, the projectiles that actually go full screen, like a tilt special. Oh, that doesn't go full screen, it's about the same distance. But a regular special goes that far, and so does her um, charging kick, which can be really good for actually chasing in behind your projectiles, because the regular version of this is actually safe, but we'll talk about it later. But yeah, her regular buttons are very unique, and <laughs> thus why I've talked about them for so long. You need to make sure you're using them correctly, just as a way to, you know, you throw them out as three projectiles. That's basically what they are. They're free projectiles. You can get a little bit of damage off them if they hit. Um, make sure you're just not going too wild or you will get punished because they've got really bad tracking. <laughs> okay, so now for her air projectiles, or her air attacks, I mean. They're very similar to her ground ones. She just throws some projectiles. They actually do some kind of decent damage for projectiles that go... You know, that far. They do more damage than her grounded ones for just doing a simple string. And these ones you actually can cancel um, for some decent damage. Like, if you want to cancel these, you can go into a dive kick and do something like that. You can get convert off of them pretty easily. Like, if you see they hit, and like, boop. Okay, I'll do that. Go for a reset, whatever. Um, but yeah, they're pretty similar to her um, grounded projectiles, except for the fact that they're a lot safer and have better tracking. So she actually throws the last projectile, it retracts the opponent, so if they've moved since you've thrown the first two, the third one will actually go closer to the opponent and it'll go to where they are now. So it has a lot better tracking and it's a lot safer because she's in the like high in the air when she's throwing these, she's really high. So if the opponent tries to do a grounded attack, like a, you know, like a run-in, or just grounded attacks or anything, they're gonna totally whiff while she's throwing these over her head, so you can probably punish some grounded attacks, or just dodge them, and even if you think they are gonna punish you, maybe they do a water wheel or something that will hit in the air, then, just as we said before, you can dash out of the way. You can even dash by using her, um, you know, her dash projectile, which we'll, you know, get into next, but that's a good way she can dash and keep those safe. Her aerial tilt attack is one of a a really important aspect of her toolkit, because as you can see here, unlike other characters, it actually starts a yellow combo. Um, <laughs> which is really useful for her, since her regular attacks start a red combo, which does kind of suck a lot. So, being able to get a yellow combo from her, you know, her dive kick attack is really important for her. So make sure, you know, when you're, you know, jumping in the air, maybe you, you went to throw some projectiles and you're like, wait, what if I just did a dive kick here? That could actually hit the opponent. Maybe they've done something that's punishable, or that you've jumped over, or you've, you know, done an air dodge, like jump air dodge into a dive kick. You can get some pretty cool stuff. And because it's a double hitting dive kick, even if you're out of range of the first hit, a lot of the time the second hit will hit and catch the opponent off guard because they're like, oh, you whiffed your dive kick, and then boom, no, you actually get kicked by the second half. And it has great range. As you can see around this distance, the second hit will actually hit the opponent and, you know, off of it, you can get a free combo. And obviously do a lot more than that. You can do something like this. Whoops. Something like this, and go into a down combo. Cost me like only one bar and I got some pretty decent damage off of a dive kick, which a lot of people don't get much damage off of a raw dive kick, whereas Susumaru does. So make sure you're keeping this in your toolkit. And you know, because your opponent's gonna be expecting you to throw out projectiles and stuff, having a, a really far advancing dive kick is a really good way of catching your opponent off guard if they think you're just gonna keep, you know, zoning and being annoying. <laughs> so make sure you're using it, because it gets her more damage than her projectiles do. Her tilt attack on the ground is actually really, really strong. It has a big hitbox, so even when people try to sidestep it, like, it's not just these rocks. This thing has a huge radius. I'm not sure how to show it in training mode. Like, I don't have the finger dexterity to control two controllers that well. But a lot of the time, like, when you're attacking, or if the opponent's attacking you and you do this armor attack, because, you know, when you... If the opponent's pressing battle... Here we go. So if I'm doing my armor attack and my opponent's pressing buttons, a lot of the time the way people dodge out of their armor attack is by, you know, they're like, oh crap, I'm doing buttons, the opponent's doing an armor attack, I'll just sidestep out of the way and do something like this to keep myself safe. But a lot of the time, the hitbox on this damn <laughs> armor attack is so big that it just goes straight through any sidestep. They have to do like two sidesteps and get well out of the way. And as you saw, it actually even hits him when he went behind her. Like, obviously not when he gets too far behind, but that example we did before, 
It actually hit behind him. Okay, I'm not able to replicate it, but it has a really big hitbox and she goes a decent ways forward. So like it hits at round start distance and she can combo off of it and she's left in the air. So depending on what distance, she can get a dive kick off of it and just get a super simple combo like this. Um, yeah, you just get some attacks. You're not really going to get too much off of it. If you want to get some, you could do something like this. Then you're getting some okay damage, you know, nearly 3,000 on an average defense character like Sabito. And um, what I like to do actually a lot of the time is just go for three projectiles and then go in for a grab as they fall to the ground. A lot of people don't expect it, they're just standing there blocking and then you've gotten a decent chunk of damage where you otherwise wouldn't have. See, that's like a regular full combo worth of damage, whereas off of a, you know, a tilt attack, you're not really going to get too much damage, especially with, with her. <clears throat> So yeah, very good armor attack. Make sure you're using it because obviously, you know, demons don't have, or particularly her, she doesn't have an invincible DP. Um, she can make this one invincible, but then it's unsafe. But uh, yeah, make sure you're using this as a really good way to armor through your opponent's attacks. If they're just mashing through or dashing through whatever you do, catch them off guard, use this and get a combo from it. And it has really decent distance, but if you see they are running away from it and they, you're going to whiff and get punished for it, just make sure you sidestep out of the way and keep it safe. Or honestly, what's really good with her is because she has such a good dive kick, you can just jump into the air or throw projectiles or jump into the air and do some uh, dive kick, whatever. That wasn't an optimal combo, but you can see my point. Okay, um, her grab is actually something pretty noteworthy to mention. It's actually kind of like Nezuko. <laughs> Or like Hinokami Tanjiro, it's one of the best grabs in the game, it does above average damage for a grab, 14,000 damage, um, chill, 1,400 damage on an average defense character, so that is pretty damn high damage, unlike a poor character like Yahaba who gets like 700, it's pretty pathetic, she actually gets a pretty decent chunk of damage, and as you can see, it reaches really, really far, it's like Nezuko level reach, maybe a little bit less, but she reaches far, it's quite fast, it's just a really good grab, and it's very, very useful for a character like her who, you know, you're a zoner, you're not very good at opening the opponent up. She doesn't have, like, you know, too great pressure, but you, with this tool, it makes her pressure really amazing. Because if the opponent's guarding, I can dash in behind it, go for a grab when they think they're going to be blocking my projectiles, and boom. It's just a really good way of advancing from a distance, and then it makes it a lot easier to do dashing grabs, because you can get it from like basically at any distance. Whether you accidentally stop right in their face, or whether you stop like here, you're still going to be able to grab the opponent, and it makes your dash in grabs so much easier. And it just makes her full screen presence so much scarier, because they're like, oop, are we blocking projectiles? Are we, like, what are we doing right now? See, like, they just blocked that last projectile, boom, grab. <laughs> it's just a really good grab, and it's a really important part of our toolkit. Like we said before, when you're going for, like, resets, like, say you've gotten your tilt attack, it's really good for resets, because you can grab the opponent from basically any distance when you stop doing something. It's just... It's just really powerful. I recommend you, <laughs> you use it a lot. Um... Notes on her movement, it's pretty average, you know, a normal dash, normal run-in, average speed. Her air dash is pretty average, it keeps her in the air for a little bit, it doesn't go straight to the ground like Yahaba, um, but it's not, you know, floaty like, uh, what's her name? Oh my god, Butterfly Lady. <laughs> uh, mind blank, whatever. But it's really good that she can, um, you know, jump, sidestep, and still be in the air for a little bit of time, so she can throw some projectiles from the air. If she sees they hit, she can go in for a combo. Maybe a reset if you want to feel a bit tricky with your lovely grab we just talked about. And, you know, also just dash sidestep into a dive kick. That's also really good, but mainly you're just going to be doing, like, jump dash into projectiles. Because that's just a really good way of defensive offense. Because you're starting your offense with a really defensive move. So jumping sideways and sidestepping. So you're jumping over whatever the opponent does and sidestepping, which will negate any tracking that their moves have. So you're just being, like, completely, you know, invincible, basically, for the startup of this. You know, remove tracking and then punish them with whatever your projectiles you have. And then, if you want to get a combo, you get a combo. Depends on the distance, though. But either way, you can do something like this and get some decent damage. It's just a very good way of getting safe safe offense going. Very powerful. 
Uh, okay, I think that's all of her regulars we've talked about. Now let's talk about her special moves. Wow, this is going to be a long review, but she's a really cool character, so I feel like she deserves it. So, her regular special move is pretty simple and honestly not the most particularly, the most, well, the most useful move in her moveset. Um, it's just a single projectile. It travels a lot faster than any of her others, even like this one. Um, yeah, it's her fastest traveling projectile, except for maybe like these ones. But uh, it's basically for catching the opponent off guard. Sometimes when you do like this special move and they're expecting you to a run in and then they, you know, stand there and want to sidestep it. If you do something like this and then just throw this one, it travels so fast it catches the opponent like going to like go in for a runaway or something. So sometimes, you know, you finish your full attack string and if they're blocking it, they like see you finish your attack string and they're like, okay, finally, I can move and they start walking sideways or something. And then you throw this out at the end and then just catch him off guard. It's just a super fast traveling projectile to catch your opponent off guard, and that's basically it. And also it can, it's other uses that it can combo off of her other projectiles where she normally can't combo into things. So if she's wanting to keep safe and just, you know, combo off of doing these, then she can do that and just get a little extra chunk of damage. And it's basically just like her easiest combo ender. It's not the most damaging combo ender, but it's just like the most reliable. Like if you want to get an extra chunk of damage and you're not sure if something will reach, maybe you're too far away for her like flying kick, or you're in the air, like getting landing these, you can always do her regular special just to get a little extra chunk of damage. Other than that, it's not too useful. It doesn't combo into her ultimate. It doesn't combo into anything, really. I don't think at all. I've tested, it doesn't combo into any of these because the opponent just recovers too quickly. So yeah, it's not a combo tool, just a combo ender and a quick projectile to catch your opponent off guard. Not too much to say there. Now her sidestep special is actually really, really useful for her. Because it's basically combining a sidestep, but a further reaching sidestep. Look, look how far she goes with a single sidestep. She goes like this little bit. But where she goes with this, it's like almost a quarter of a circle. Maybe, maybe a, a fifth of a circle. <laughs> but she goes super far. And it's like doing like two or three sidesteps. It's really powerful. So she dodges like anything that's coming her way. If the opponent's trying to, you know, dash in on her, because obviously people want to dash in because they're like, oh, they're zoning. I just want to get in and do some offense. And then if they dash in and you do this, you dodge their dash, whatever. It even dodges the likes of water wheels. It can dodge other projectiles. It can dodge, yeah, basically anything that has a straight trajectory, <laughs> it'll dodge. It'll it's just a, a super powerful tool, and because it's so uncommittal, because she can cancel it into anything, she can cancel it into her combo starter, which is the most useful part about it, especially considering her combo starter is safe, so you can just do this whenever you want, and like, unless the opponent sidesteps and, you know, makes you whiff, that's when you're unsafe here. But she can get, you know, super safe combos just by dodging whatever the opponent does, maybe she dodges a projectile or a run-in, or just attacks, whatever we said. And then, yeah, she can go in for a combo, combo for it. And if she's really far away, she can do the charged version, or she can do it wherever, but a lot of the time the regular version might not reach, and then you can get a combo for it that way. You can do the charged version whenever for a bit more damage to your combo. But um, the charged version is unsafe, so you have to be a little bit more careful about it. Um, she can also cancel it into a regular projectile if she's wanting to keep super, super safe. Like, if she's just wanting to stay full screen, she can just, like, you know... <laughs> throw a projectile and then run away and throw this and there's nothing the opponent can do about it. She just gets some safe damage from super far away. And that's basically the uses for this projectile, you know. And also, when she's throwing, you know, her regular buttons, pretend the opponent's blocking these, she can just, instead of, you know, dodging out of the way to, you know, keep herself safe, she can just use one skill meter or special meter to throw a projectile and dodge at the same time, instead of dodging and then throwing another projectile. It's just a really, really awesome tool. And the fact that it can combo into other things, so like if she's, you know, the opponent's blocking, I'm just throwing these, and maybe they have they were running around, or maybe, you know, I think they're gonna punish me or do something, I can just dash out of the way with this projectile. Oops, make sure you go sideways. I can dodge out of the way with this one, and if I do think it's gonna hit, cool, I can go in and start a combo. If it doesn't hit, meh. Like, I just keep safe by doing the regular version. It's just a really, really, really amazing tool. Gotta make sure you're using it whenever. It's not as good in the air, because you can't special cancel things into the air other than doing that. But, you know, it's still very useful as a, as a, as a dodge projectile. That's just ridiculous to even say. And another quick note on her 
um, this projectile. It's very good for keeping herself safe. Like, if you are just wanting to retreat on the opponent, you can do this. And you've got a lot of distance here. There's nothing the opponent... Oops, excuse me. There's nothing the opponent can do to... Hello? There's nothing the opponent do, can do to punish you in that situation. And if you're really wanting to build some distance, you can actually just, you know, do a full attack string into a tilt back into that projectile. And as you can see, that was a single block string. The opponent didn't even get hit, and we're this far away. So it's a really good way of building distance. And if you don't know what I did, I just did the tilt special move backwards and into the regular projectile, and that just builds so much distance. See, even on its own, just from around this range, like, <laughs> I'm nearly... Like, I'm... I think I am half screen away from the opponent. They can, my projectiles are about to disappear. So, you can build a lot of distance that way, especially if you do regular attack string into it, like the upper attack string. Like you're full screen away from the opponent now, and if you're really successing in zoning against your opponent, maybe they keep getting hit by your projectiles, and you're like, wow, zoning is working out really well for me. I really want to build some distance between myself and the opponent. Do this, get away from the opponent. If they decide to block anything, then boom, I can run away on block. It's amazing. <laughs> So yeah, if zoning's working out for you, just make sure you're running away and getting it going. Now for her guard special. Uh, it's uh, probably one of the <laughs> best tools in the game, honestly. It's definitely one of her most useful tools, and I would, yeah, I'll stick by saying it's one of the most useful attacks in the entire game. It's basically, maybe I shouldn't say it's a better version of the water wheel, but it's on par with water wheel, I would say. Um, mainly for the reason that, uh, okay, I'll get Sabito to move and just walk completely sideways. And walking completely sideways is unfortunately a very effective tool against zoners in this game. Like, for Yahaba's instance, he has nothing that can track down an opponent that is just walking sideways. Even his dash, if they're walking completely sideways, if there's someone that has a slightly faster run than Sabito, his dash will completely miss, especially if they sidestep. All he can do is dash, but all of his projectiles will whiff an opponent walking sideways. And the same is said for Susumaru, honestly. Like, no projectiles hit an opponent walking sideways. So I guess that's kind of good. But the fact that she can just be doing these and cancel into her running meterless combo starter. Now that's what makes it scary. <laughs> and, yeah, so... There's just so much to say about this move. So it has great tracking. It can track an opponent that's walking um, sideways. It doesn't track um, against an opponent dashing. I mean, sidestepping. That will ruin its um, its tracking. But if the opponent is sidestepping so much, a lot of the time, even if it does miss, they're not going to be able to punish you because they're trapped in the animation of their sidesteps and they're probably not going to have time to do that and then rat dash in and punish you. It's just, it's just not really going to happen much. So that's really, really good. And also, on top of the fact that it has great tracking, it is also safe. Now, let me see if I can... Okay, I'm controlling both controllers now, so... Leave me alone if this looks awkward. So, <laughs> if I just do the regular version, I will hold block with Tsusamaru, and I'll just be mashing with Sabito as soon as I block the special move. So, ready? Special move. Now, I'm mashing with Sabito. No punish. It's a safe, like, full-screen dash-in move that starts combos for free. It is ridiculous. It's so crazy. So, yes. If I just push this, I can just pull the trigger, I dash in on the opponent, and boom, I can get a combo. We'll talk more about what combos you get after it later. But you're gonna get some pretty decent damage off of this, especially depending on how much meter you're willing to spend. Like, if I do something like this... you're getting some really decent damage for very little meter usage. As you can see, by the time the opponent stands up, I've basically built back all of my meter and done a big chunk of damage to the, my poor opponent. Like, damn. She can deal out some damage when she lands this special move. So, it has great tracking, it's safe, it reaches really far, it can combo off of her dodge projectile, which is probably the way you're going to be landing it the most, because that is just ridiculous. She can dodge and throw a projectile, so she, you know, negates tracking, throws a projectile, they can combo off of the projectile into a meterless combo starter that is safe, and then get a combo going off of just doing that sequence. It's, it's pretty damn ridiculous. So, what, what else does it have going for it? It's safe, it starts combos for free, you can combo off of her, you know, her dodge projectile with it, you can do it from basically full screen, and if you hold down the button, 
it's invincible and does more damage. Now, when you do this version, it does become unsafe. So make sure you're just doing this one most of the time. Like if you're not sure if it'll hit, just do this version and I recommend doing it most of the time. But if you know your opponent is an annoying damn opponent and won't sidestep out of something, or maybe like they just water wheel over the place, or maybe they just, you know, do big committal moves and don't sidestep out of them, you know you're gonna get a punish. If my opponent's doing something like, like this, like get out of the way. I'll just like <laughs> boot you from full quit full <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'll boot you from all the way across the screen, armor through whatever you do. And just just make you kind of die. Like all that damage, and now I'm building back 4,300 damage, and I get to build back all my meter before the opponent wakes up. It's a crazy, crazy combo starter. That's where she gets most of her damage. And just the fact that she can have an invincible version is ridiculous, that travels basically full screen. So if the opponent throws projectiles, like say Yahaba's like, oh, I'll throw out my arrows to stop you throwing out your projectiles or something, then like, boom, if they're doing anything committal, armor through it. But just keep in mind, if you're not sure whether it's going to hit the opponent, you will get punished, because if they block it, they can punish you. So only throw this version out if you know you're going to punish the opponent for trying to press buttons and you're going to armor through something. Or if you know you've landed a projector, like say you've done two of these and you're like, oh yeah, that's definitely hit, you can go for this version then, because it's going to get you a bit more damage than the regular version. And uh, yeah, you're getting damage off of your projectiles and that's just a really amazing thing. <laughs> um, no, you can't do it on the in the air, which sucks. I mean, obviously you can't do it in the air. But it's it's like the most amazing move in our tool set. Make sure you're using it. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> okay, now that we've finished being sponsored by <laughs> her guard special, Let's talk about something else. Oh yeah, also, guard special. If she holds it down for a little bit, it's her invincible move, but I do recommend you do this most of the time because you can actually keep it safer. Like, if you see the opponent's blocking, um, you can actually cancel out of using her armor attack. You can keep yourself safe, whereas this version, there's nothing you can do. You can't cancel it. You have to, once you commit to the invincible, you have to commit and hope that it hits, and if it doesn't hit, you get punished. So yeah. Now, let's move on to her demon special moves, her demon sidekick special moves, whatever. Uh, standing one is basically just a lot of damage, a lot of projectiles. <laughs> That's literally what it is. Against a character like a demon, this will do like <laughs> basically a quarter of their health just by hitting them with this like one projectile sequence. It's ridiculous. It does so much damage. And if your opponent is low on life, and if you just want to, you know, take some damage off of them, you can get so much chip damage if you just want to use this special move. Like if you're wanting to cash out, like maybe I have a boost ready, I'm like, let me just use all of my special moves and like... Let me just use up all of my meter, all of my demon meter, and then I'll just boost afterwards. And, you know, I just want to boost so that I go into boost mode and I can get everything back. Well, you can get a ton of chip damage just by, you know, doing some stuff and then going into projectile, 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 into this. Look how much chip damage I've gotten. And keep in mind, chip damage is not a big part of this game. But against a character that's maybe a demon or someone that takes even more damage, look how much damage they've taken just by blocking all of this stuff, and then I boost, and I can do it all again if I'd like. So if your opponent is low on health, I honestly like doing this a lot of the time, just spending all of my meter, especially if it's like the last round, I'll just spend all of my meter, and then boost, and then they've got like, you know, a single pixel of life. So they just can't hit, get hit by anything, and unlike Yahaba, my projectiles do damage, so all of these things that I'm throwing out on the screen, They just get hit by. What did I just do? Um, <laughs> we'll be back. Okay, oops, I don't know. <laughs> accidentally entered online ranked by pressing a button. Whoopsie doops. But uh, we were just talking about her demon skill. It does a lot of chip damage. It just does a lot of damage in general. So if you want to get a big chunk of damage off of like doing, like ending a combo, maybe you've done something like this. Maybe I just want to keep it short and simple and get a chunk of damage off of it. You can end combos like that and just get like. A big chunk of damage for keeping it simple. Keep in mind, it does take a lot of time though, so you know, it's gonna be have to a slightly shortened combo to end it in this. But you can even do it off of some of her projectiles if you just want to get a decent chunk of damage off of it. I don't really recommend that though, that's not too much damage. But yeah, it's just a lot of damage, a lot of chip damage, holds the opponent down for a bit, and you get some damage. Her Tilt Demon skill is one that I'm gonna rave about for a bit though. So, this special move, she throws like, I don't know, six? six or eight projectiles and they just hit everywhere in front of her it honestly doesn't have it's the range is a bit deceiving because it won't hit around this distance because she does do a big jump back but it's such a good 
evasive and offensive tool. Because as you can see, she's armored when she does it. So that means she has an armor attack, a charged guard attack that's invincible, and this. So she has a lot of invincible special moves, unlike poor Akaza. And this one starts combos too. So she can either do it for free, just by doing, you know, a tilt attack from the air, and she gets good damage from this. So if I do something simple like this, actually I'm not even sure what an optimal combo is. If I do something like, wait. Three thousand six hundred damage, and I've built back all of my skill meter, so I didn't spend any special meter. And very soon after, I've built back all of my demon gauge. Like that is a ridiculous thing that I can get off this off of an armored attack. That is a retreating armored attack projectile, and I can just get all that damage off of it, and it costs me basically nothing. That's pretty ridiculous. So, what makes this special move amazing? A lot of things. It does a lot of damage on its own, honestly. So even if you just do something simple off of it, you're going to get a decent chunk of damage. Um, it has armor, so you can use it as a reversal. Like, maybe if you're in a block string and you, like, do a pushback, you can use this as her reversal. If the opponent is just really scaring you and you're in some pressure, or if, you know, you're waking up, it's a really good wake-up special move, because she leaps backwards. So, you know, it beats, like, anything that's going to hit her. So it doesn't even matter that it's armored, because nothing's going to hit her, because she leaps back so quickly. Then she throws out these projectiles, so it'll punish the, whatever the opponent's doing. And even if they do block it, it's practically safe, because she can block so quickly after it, and especially after they block all those projectiles, it's basically safe. And um, if it does hit, which 90% of the time it does, because, you know, you're armoring through something, or you're just countering the opponent, you can get a combo off of it. And there are a few combo routes you can get off of it. You can do her air specials, and then cancel her air specials, not cancel, but you can juggle her air specials, I mean her air attacks, into her demon run, but that's a little bit tricky, and honestly I don't recommend doing it too much online, because you're totally going to mess it up and just lose damage, or maybe that's just me, but I find this really difficult, I'm in training mode right now, I don't even have like online delay, there we go. So you can get damage going that way, but what I find, you know, a lot more consistent is just going for a dive kick. And then just doing the combos that you would usually do off of this. And as we saw before, you got like 3,800 damage. So that's kind of ridiculous. Keep in mind though, if you are around this range and you hit the move, your dive kick will not work. Oh, it did. It worked there. Okay. Sometimes like at max range, it doesn't reach. Wow, it reached there. Sometimes the dive kick is a little bit finicky, but it seems like it's actually working pretty consistently now. <laughs> so, yeah. I recommend just going for a dive kick and then going for the close combos that you do before, and that does around 3,800 damage, and that's ridiculous. And you can cash out even more if you like. Like, I'm sure you could do something like this. And do... I messed that up, but... <laughs> you can see, you're gonna get a lot of damage. Keep messing this up. Nope. Last time. <laughs> 5,000 damage. My demon skill's almost back, and I only spent like three bars. That's a lot of damage she gets off of this. So make sure you're keeping this in the back of mind, of your mind when you're playing Super Mario. Like, ah, huh, if I can counter my opponent with this, I can make them die. And keep in mind, this is against Sabito. So if it's against someone like poor Akaza, he's gonna lose like 75% of his life just from this from getting hit by this, which is, you know, invincible, reversal, it's amazing, it's... <laughs> I'm like, what? And if I added an ultimate to the end of there, it would have done so much of it. It's ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous. But, uh, I think we've talked about her <laughs> special moves enough for now. Her ultimate is, um... I guess we also quickly talk about her, um, boost mode. When she does her full combo string of her booth mode, she just throws one extra projectile and it just does a bit of damage. And honestly, this is really good because this is like basically the most damage she gets off of her regular projectiles. So whenever you're in boost mode and you do land normal projectiles, just go for her full attack string. That's the most damage she's going to get off of it. And um, obviously all of her special moves are going to do more damage when she's in boost mode. So you're going to get a lot more damage just off of your regular BNBs. So that's great. And her ultimate is a projectile. Um, if you're comboing off of it full screen, the only thing it really combos off of is this. It won't, unfortunately it won't combo off of this special move. It just doesn't ever, which kind of sucks. But the fact that she has an invincible full screen projectile super move is just amazing. 
Because she can just hit the opponent with, you know, 75% of their life gone from full screen, and it's ridiculous. So, yeah, really awesome super. But just do be careful when activating it in combos, because comboing into it can be a little bit strange for her. So, I'll just quickly show you what I'm talking about. If I'm doing a combo like this... Oops. Um, I'll just keep it simple just to show you what I'm talking about. If I'm doing a few attacks, sometimes if I've done something like this, it will whiff there. Or sometimes if I'm near a wall, particularly. She'll just completely miss the ultimate, and then you're just standing there awkwardly, and you get punished, and you've wasted a bunch of meter. So that sucks, and just be careful about that. Because the wall kind of, yeah, as you saw before, it does kind of mess up her combos. Sometimes she messes, misses her balls, and she can miss her ultimate. And also be careful that if, you're, if you've done a long combo, when you activate ultimate, the slowdown that goes into the ultimate does also count to the combo counter. So if I throw a projectile like that, as you can see, my projectile was on the screen, but when I'm in this slowdown, where the time freezes, but my combo counter does not freeze. So if a, a projectile hits the opponent after that happens, and the counter goes to zero, she's not going to be able to combo into it, because then they're going to get blown back by that last projectile. So as you can see here, he got blown out, and I didn't actually get the ultimate, so do really be careful of that. The way I recommend it doing it is just doing a single projectile into the ultimate, and just making sure you have enough time. And just don't waste a meter. Make sure if you're throwing your ultimate, it's going to hit. So either do it off of a combo where you know it's going to hit by, like, a single projectile. Or do it off of, like, a few of these and you're like, oh, that's hitting. Let me just combo into my ultimate. Or just do it raw like a lot of people do. <laughs> or save your meter for a boost, which I think is really useful for Zonas like Susamaru and Yahaba. <clears throat> so, we've talked about all of her special moves. We've talked about all of her normal attacks. We've talked about basically everything for half an hour. Let's talk about combos and strategy. Now, I've always, already teased them, but if you're skipping to this point, I guess, hello. But, uh, yeah, combos are through tomorrow. You're not going to get much damage off of your regular attack. I'll just get that right off the bat. When you get land projectiles, if you're wanting to just, you know, do some simple damage, I would recommend you just do a down combo. Like, if the opponent gets hit, don't bother wasting your meter on something that's going to do, like, 1,000, like, 300 damage. Just, like, by spending a bar of meter, just do a down combo, take your free meter from your projectiles and leave it, and save your meter for when you actually are going to deal some damage. The most damage she can get from doing her, you know, regular attack strings is doing her up combo and her charge special. That does, like, 17,000. I think that's the most damage, right? It does more damage than this. Yeah, that does more damage. So, yeah, do her up combo into her charged, um, guard special. That does the most damage. But, um... Yeah, usually just go for your down combo and keep yourself safe that way. If the opponent blocks it, you can sidestep out of the way. And, because unless you're doing, like, like spending two bars to get a little bit more, I don't really think there's a point in spending all that meter just to get 2,000 damage, and it just doesn't seem worth it to me. So, save your meter when you get hits that will actually give you damage, and the hits that will give her damage are her guard special, both the charge and the normal version, but the normal version is safer, so you're probably going to be getting it most of the time, because it's less committal and scary. Also her dive kick, also her tilt demon special, and obviously you'll also get a combo for your armor attack, but it has to be a little bit shorter. And that's about it. Oh, and also her tilt special move. So basically anything apart from her regular attacks. <laughs> so if you land any of your projectile, you can cancel it into her combo starter. If you land your combo starter, you can go to get a combo. If you land your tilt demon skill, her reversal, you can get a combo going if you don't suck. But uh, those are where she's going to be getting decent amounts of damage, so make sure you're saving your meter so you can cash out when you get these kinds of hits. And when you get these kinds of hits, you can get damage like this. And this is this is like the above end damage, but if you want to really cash out, you can do something like this, I think. So nearly 5,000 damage for only three bars. And she's building back most of it by the end, because you're just ending in normal attacks. And... Yeah, she builds back her meter quickly because the the bar you spent. Yeah, 
it costs you like really barely anything and you get like five basically five thousand damage which is ridiculous and it's gonna be like five thousand or more than five thousand if you're against someone like a demon or someone that takes more damage than um sabito so that's just ridiculous so you can see why you want to make sure you save your meter for these combos and also this isn't a combo thing but you're wanting to make sure you save your meter so that you can throw projectiles and you can be a threat from a distance because if you don't have any meter like you're going to be very unsafe throwing your attack projectiles because they have bad tracking. You've got to be able to sidestep out of them. That costs meter. And basically, you just got to be able to have meter to function as Susamaru. Because you just got to keep yourself safe. you got to throw your projectiles. And doing everything with Susamaru basically costs meter. So even though this massive damage combo only costs three bars, you want to be saving your damage, saving your meter so that you can do these combos. Um, I didn't do the charge special, so that'll do a bit less. But just... Save your meter if you get your regular attacks. <laughs> Don't waste your meter on it. So, yeah. You can do the same style of combo if you are not able to get the charge special. It does make the combo, you know, a little bit tight if you do the charge special. But even without doing it, you're going to get some okay damage. Like, that's that's pretty damn good. 3,400 damage for an easy BNB. But um, if you do get your charge special, you don't even have to start it, start it with the charge special. If you are able to time getting the charge specials in the middle of the combo, it'll add a lot more damage to our combos. Unless you s suck. What? And uh, see, that's already a lot more damage. So, um... Should I annotate what I do? Some people are saying, like, tell me what buttons you're pressing, but it's a pretty simple game. Like, you're doing guard special, dash up. That's the really good thing about a guard special as well. You can just dash up for free and get her aerial buttons. So that's really amazing. So, uh, yeah. Guard special, dash up, tilt attack, attack, guard special, dash up, tilt attack, attack, special, attack. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, it's, it's your guard special, you dash in, tilt attack, then regular attack. Guard special, dash in, tilt attack, rinse and repeat that, and if your timing is good and you're able to fit in charge specials, go for charge specials because it's going to get you a lot more damage, and you do actually get a little more damage if you end the combo by doing her regular um, air attacks, because they do a bit more damage than her tilt attack, so when you're on your final loop and you put the, um, you know, the combo meter is about to run out of meter, just do... Oops. See, if you time it a little bit wrong, then she misses one of the dash-ins. So doing all of them charged can be a little bit difficult, but if you're able to time it, do it. So there we go. Ended in that. You get nearly 5,000 damage. Really good. And she builds back a meter soon after. It's very amazing. And if you want to, you know, cash out a little bit less, like perhaps you've landed your projectile into this, you can do a very simple combo. Just do, like, a down combo. That's pretty decent damage, 2,300 off of a projectile, the dodges, that's pretty amazing. And honestly, I recommend doing that most of the time, because even if you do, like, a charged, um, a charged guard special, you're not going to be able to get too much more damage off of this. Um, here, let me see how much we can get. You're going to get, like, 4,000, maybe a little bit over 4,000 if you don't screw it up like I just did. But I guess that's good, but you are spending a bunch of meter, especially since you started it with two special moves. Um, I honestly just prefer most of the time, just if I get a charge one, just do my down combo and save some of the meter for some later combos, because that's, you know, decent damage for what it is. If I land a tilt attack in the air, it's basically the same rounds. This is basically her combo all the time that I find works best. So basically, no matter how many hits you do, you're just going to do this rinse and repeat cycle basically off of any kind of hit so if I get a land a dive kick just be careful if you you know do something like a dive kick the opponent has to be quite far in the air to get your um charged guard special and that means that if they're not high enough in the air you're not able to get the combo properly so off of a tilt attack I recommend you just do a regular special to get them high enough into the air and then after that you can do a charged guard special because then your combo will actually work <clears throat> getting a combo off of her tilt demon special like I said before do something like this oopsie dive kick maybe if you're cashing out you can do something like this ah damn it I'm 
and then go for a reset, so you've gotten about half of their health, and you go for a grab, so you're doing tons of damage. But you can see that basic combo route, you just do it like however much meter you want to spend, even if you'd like only spend the one bar. Oopsie. It's really decent damage. So however much you want to spend, just do what you want, because you're going to get pretty decent damage either way. Oh my god. Unless you can't do combos while recording like me. So even if I just did that like one bar combo, and I've built it all back by the end, I'm still getting a really decent chunk of damage for, you know, an armored reversal. Very, very good. Um, combos off of her tilt attack. You're basically always just going to be doing her aerial tilt attack afterwards. Sometimes it won't combo, like if you're far away, if I'm like at this distance, you don't really get a combo at all, because I don't think even her regular attacks in the air- oh no, so those combo. So unless you're kind of closest to the opponent, like you have to be really far for it to not work, but if you are really far, I guess you just, you know, get your um, aerial attacks and do a few of those, and if you want to get some more damage you can cancel it into that, but I'd probably just recommend just keeping it meterless, because you're not getting much damage either way. But if you are closer, like around this distance, go for a tilt attack. You can spend some meter, go for something like this. Oops. Oops. So yeah, that's some actually pretty decent damage for one bar off of an armored move. But um, usually I like to keep it meterless and just do something like this. Just do three, and then have the opponent fall back down, and I catch him and grab him. Because that's good damage, and it's meterless, and it's a reset, so the opponent gets a little bit more antsy when they're getting hit. They're like, oh no, now I have to be worried about grabs, and that means whenever, you know, whenever the opponent's scared, that's just good, because then they fall for random things, like, you know, random projectiles and stuff. If you keep them on their toes, you're just more likely to get cool things going. So... We talked about, you know, combos off of a tilt attack is basically the same as getting a combo off of here, which is basically the same as getting a combo off of here. Um, oh yeah, also off of a demon skill. I mentioned it when we talked about it, but you can get combos like this going, but they are quite difficult. I can barely even land them in training mode, but they do can do some really good damage. But uh, yeah, I, I honestly recommend just going for a tilt attack because it's um a lot more reliable, as you can see. I'll try two more times. There we go. So yeah, you can get some decent damage and make it a bit cheaper there, but uh, I recommend just going for a tilt attack. It's a lot easier, especially playing online. There's no way I would hit that combo online. <laughs> Uh, I think that's about all there is to say about her combos. And pressure with Susamaru is pretty self-explanatory. Like, you're just throwing projectiles. If they're blocking your projectiles, I like to do a dash in behind them, go in for a grab. Or, you know, sometimes I just do fake out the dash in and then actually let the dash in hit, because then they try to sidestep and then they get hit by the dash in. And then maybe after the dash in, I go for a grab, because they think, you know, after the dash in, I'm at advantage, so I'll just press more buttons. Which, obviously, sometimes I do, but sometimes I'll just go for a grab. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. She's not too crazy on pressure, but just make sure using these slow-traveling projectiles as really good setup tools for her amazing, amazing grab. And, uh, I guess we just talk about surge and ultimate combos now, quickly. Because they're pretty simple, as always. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you've spent all your meter, maybe you've done a combo... Uh, with like this, maybe I've done, ooh, what if I do like something like this? And I've spent like a bunch of meter, and I've also spent all of my special moves, and I'm like, oh damn, I can't break combos, and I've spent all of my meter. Let me go into boost mode, build it all back, now I'm in boost mode. Now when I'm in boost mode, when I land regular projectiles, I just want to do my full attack string, because this is the most damage I'll ever get off of my regular attacks, and now I can just get it for free, so that's really amazing, and I can save my meter and get more damage. Obviously when I'm in boost mode, um... My special moves are going to do more damage, so when I do a combo like this, it's going to do even more damage. Like, 5,500 damage for that combo. That was three bars, and I built it back quickly. That is ridiculous. 
And if I go into surge mode, I'm sure everyone's seen the touch of deaths that she can do by doing like, ooh, into da da da, and then doing this. And then, <laughs> that was in like, that was a touch of death when they were half health. But, you know. Touch of Death, they're pretty easy. You can Google them, there's a hundred thousand of them. You just spam, spam some special moves into regular attacks. You do a ton of damage. If you want to combo into her ultimate, it does get a little bit tricky. I talked about it before. But basically, I recommend doing something like this. And just keeping it simple, because the co combo counter can go down and you can awkwardly miss. And if you try to do a few attacks into it, it can awkwardly miss because her balls miss when you're near the corner. And if I'm wanting to combo into my ultimate, I really just don't want to risk it. I just want to do something that I know will combo into it, do a decent chunk of damage, and let the ultimate do its own decent chunk of damage. Like, that, that was pretty okay damage, right? And obviously if I see these hit and I cancel them into each other, I'm like, oh, that's comboing. Okay, cool. Do an ultimate, and now the opponent's dead. Those are the main ways she's going to be comboing into her ultimate, get a big chunk of damage. But honestly, most of the time, I think I use my meter for boosts and surges because you can rebuild all of your meter that you spend like particularly your demon skill meter like for her tilt demon skill it's so amazing it gets so much good damage it's an amazing invincible reversal it's amazing so i'm using it a lot and obviously i'm using my regular you know meter a lot because i'm trying to keep myself safe from doing these i'm also you know zoning and doing stuff like this i run out of meter a lot and then i use boost get it all back maybe if i spend it all again like, uh, oops, I've ran out of everything, then I'll go into search mode. Honestly, I don't go into search mode too much, because I feel like it's a little bit too much meter for when the opponent's basically already dead. But, um, obviously, when I'm in search mode, everything's gonna do a ton of damage. This is probably gonna kill him. <laughs> yeah. 3,500 damage for one demon skill. Yeah, you do get a lot of damage, so, yeah. Whatever. Go into boost mode, go into search mode, get tons of damage for doing basically nothing. <laughs> it's really good. But, I think... Like three hours later, I'm finally done talking about Susamara. That was that was obviously the more in-depth character review. I think she's a very strong character. I think she is very powerful. I recommend you try her online. Even if you hate zoning characters, you can really play her in a rushdown style. You know, throw with slow projectiles and use them as pressure tools and go in for grabs. Go in for, like, cool dodge projectiles into meterless combo starters that track the opponent and are safe and can have armor if you charge them. She's just ridiculous. And I recommend you try her out. I hope this guide helped you for players that already play Susamaru. And I hope if you don't play her, I inspire you to play her. <laughs> but uh, let's end this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.